Welcome to season one of Top Crop. We found out that the ground is alive. Trying to get done a little quicker and trying to simplify things a little bit. You know, there's only so much money to go around. I look for big wins. So this field here, we planted on 30 inch rows. We, we went to 30 inch rows about three years ago. It's, it's been better for us with some of the foliar sprays we're doing. It allows us to get in the field without running over as much crop. Um, we planted this field at about 125 to 130,000 and final population on this field is coming out roughly in that 115 range. Um, don't really like to go below 90,000. We've done some low population bean uh, studies before and, and that, that 110 to 120 range is really where we're maximizing on our return. It's been a pretty good spot. Our county average fluctuates typically about 28 to 35 bushels and that's tough to make any money at beans at that point. And so many times we get told that inoculating the seed, um, for years we've been using Optimize as a seed treatment. Um, this year we're doing trials where instead of using Optimize, we're actually using a product called Bean Queen. Uh, had a higher rhizobia uh, count on it. And so we've got some fields mixed up between the two. But if you, if you look at these roots, a nodule on the main tap root will be 100 times greater than one on a lateral root. And so if you start looking at these lateral roots, like there's one on a lateral root, there's two more, and there's a lateral root that's got three on it. But if you look at the main stem coming off, all of our nodules, for the most part, I'd say 80, 90% of them are here on this on this tap on this main tap root. So this is going to store and feed, you know, for every one of those, it's it's just as good as a hundred on one of those laterals. And so that's what we really focus on is either using a liquid inocul inoculant in furrow uh, like Bean Queen or seed treatment like Bean Queen or putting optimize on there to where we're going to focus that nodulation right there on the main part of the stem. And that's that's really helped us out with the yield. Um, now, you know, if your production field is 40, maybe 45 bushel beans, you know, you're probably not gonna see as, as big of a benefit. Um, but you know, if, you, if you've got pretty good ground and, and you can push those yields 50, 60, 70, 80 bushels plus, having that inoculant out there really does help store that nitrogen for later in the season. I mean, that's the big thing that we start looking at is just getting it right here on this main, on this main tap root like that. I mean, that's really what you wanna see oh, yeah. is just covered up. And even though you do that, so like one of the things that farmers don't really pay attention to, it's better if you got a pocket knife, but you want to split that thing open. You really want to see that light pink or reddish color. Sometimes they'll be just like a, it's almost like a blackish gray color. I'm not really good with colors being colorblind. Um, but there's, there's a color difference there, and that's one of the ways to see are you actually getting that nitrogen pulled down into that nodule. Now, you don't really want to be looking at it past typically about R1, R2, because at that point you're a net negative. I mean, bean plants are making nitrogen until they hit reproduction. And then they're using that nitrogen stored in reproduction to then, you know, put the protein up into the beans. So, I mean, like that one right there, got a little bit of a red tint to it. And that's kind of what you want to see right there. So, I mean, we're getting nitrogen built Beans are only going to produce, at the max, about 300 pounds of nitrogen. If we're taking six pounds of nitrogen to make a bushel of beans, that's enough for 60 bushels. 50 to 60 bushels is typically where we end up at. So, you know, that's one of the things, if you're looking to go past 100 bushels, well, now you've got to make up a 300 nitrogen pound deficit. Mm -hmm. And so that's got to come from soil biology, it's got to come from fertility or it's got to come from organic matter breakdown. And so there's a couple different things in the toolbox that we can utilize to push our yields in a good year on a good piece of ground higher than what it would be for, you know, a, a regular year. Between top crop being out here, making some extra trips, between um, some of the agronomists that we've had on the farm, we actually were able to maintain our cotyledons right around that 10th to 12th trifolia this year on most of our fields, which is super, super long. 
you can have farms where if you plant that bean and it goes through a stressful event, whether it's drought, flood, if it doesn't have the fertility it needs early on, you can see those cotyledons fall off typically by second, third trifolia. Um, we actually had really green uh, cotyledons, like I said, on most of our fields we were hitting. Some of these other, like some of these lower yielding fields that our soil health isn't the best on, I would say six to eighth trifolia. Some of our yields, uh, fields that we're pushing uh, this year that, you know, we were noticing 10th, 12th trifolia, which is, you know, two months into the season. So it's, it was pretty awesome. Now I'm, I'm not saying that they were these, you know, really lush green cotyledons on there. They were still green. They hadn't turned yellow yet, but they started drying out and, and getting a little brittle. So I, I think at that point when we were, we were going through about a two week uh, stress period without any rainfall and, and temperatures had warmed up, essentially it sucked the moisture out of them. And uh, when it sucked the moisture out of them, they finally fell off. Yeah, I would have loved to seen them, you know, going later into the season. Um, but this, this is the first year we've seen it that far into the season um, that we were able to maintain those cotyledons. And then, you know, we've had Japanese beetles, call them June bugs here in the south. Uh, they've been coming in. Uh, we've had this farm here, we haven't got to get over the top of it with our, our, sugar, our sugar foliar sprays. Um, so our bricks levels have been down and obviously we've had some infestation of bugs move in. We're just, we've just been behind because of equipment breakdowns. But we'll come out here and, and at this point that we've got so, you know, so many of them out here, our stand counts are to the point um, that we're gonna spray it with, uh, with an insecticide. We'll hit these two fields with an insecticide. Uh, we'll go ahead and put some more sugar back on it to keep any further pest out and, uh, and let it go for the rest of the season, see how it does. We've really been fine tuning our in program over the past couple of years and running some products that are really making a difference with this early season root growth. So we love our Pivot Bio, using that product number one, and then we're adding some things to not only feed that Pivot Bio, but feed the corn plant as well. So some sugar sources, a carbon source, just trying to get these little plants off to the best start we can get them. So we had like one area right here and along this tree line that the deer absolutely just devastated them early in the season. And now you've got this. And so we're trying to contend. I think we're gonna bring a hooded sprayer in and probably just spray the row middles. I don't know, we've got probably less than a, a half acre here, but it's not so much about the beans in the half acre as it is, I just don't want this to go to a seed bank and then us have problems going into the corn crop. But I mean, look at these things, man. I mean, that's about stomach high. And I mean, we've got, so if you're looking at our phases, one, two, three, four, we're pretty much in that R3. So, I mean, this is the perfect time for us to hit our foliar pass. Um, we're gonna put in about 10 ounces of Revitech. Um, haven't seen a lot of disease issue here, but there, there has been some in the area. So we'll get the Revitech out and uh, just make sure that you know, as we continue to get some rain showers, we're not seeing that disease move into the field and, and make sure we're protecting that plant. But I mean, if you look here, six branches coming off of it. I mean, we're already setting three bean pods. I mean, there's actually already some beans in here that you can feel pretty good. Um, and I mean, if you look at node sites, 31, 32, so we're averaging 32 on that plant. And I mean, this field's been running anywhere from like 32, 35, to all the way up to we've had some that are shooting like 52 to 53 nodes. And so if we can start stacking on two or three pods per node, I mean, you're talking close to 300 pods per plant, which is kind of what we're shooting for. We're trying to shoot for that 300, 350 range. A good average guess for us is typically about 2.1 to 2.5. Um, Cause you get some twos, you get some threes, still looking for that holy grail five bean pod. Um, but if we can get a 2.2 average, that's 660 beans per plant. Our final population is right around one, uh, 154, 3200, divided by 60. If we can get 300 to 350 pod set on that plant and we can get a 2.2 .2 average that's putting us around that 
if you're at 2,800 seeds per pound, that's around a, a 140 to 150 range. If it goes to 3,200 seeds per pound, that's still in that 120 to 130 range. It's Ag Venture 4.7. It's an it's an enlist variety. Uh, it's the first time we've tried this variety this year, but it was really recommended for us. But I mean, when we start looking at these these branch sets, we first started farming. All we would see was this stalk. Um, when we started looking at cover crops, nutrient cycling, um, looking at that Haney test and, and how soil biology is working and releasing nutrients, um, started looking at a foliar program. I mean, that's. I guess that's been one of the biggest things is a lot of people don't think that foliars work. Um, the thing about foliars, it's all about timing. Um, a lot of times we're running out here late at night. Um, sometimes we'll get out here early in the morning, depends on what the weather pattern is. But when you, when you start looking at all these separate branches that keep forming off and setting nodes, I mean, you've got one branch right here that's already got three nodes set. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You've got eight, eight fruit sites on that branch. And, and same thing again, almost all of these are three bean pods that we've set on this plant. So, you know, we'll probably have higher than a 2.2 average um, as far as our, our beans per pod count goes. And, and once again, that's just, that's adding yield that this variety is performing very well with very little stress. We're not seeing hardly any bloom abortion and even looking here, I mean, we're still setting new blooms and new node sites. I would say we've probably got at least another four, maybe five weeks left in the season where we're still gonna see this indeterminate plant still setting new trifolia, still setting new node sites and, and adding, adding yield. Um, the biggest thing that we pay attention to is typically, our state's been running about five to 20 nodes per plant. And what they say is node number I believe it's node number six to about node number 19 are, are some of your main contributing yield factors. Um, that's where you're seeing your highest yield. You don't, you don't really see a lot of yield on, on the top side. You'll see your big, your big yield set there in that middle portion, two thirds of the plant. Um, but if you wanna see some, some top end yields, you'll typically still see some of these, these upper ones really fill in some nice pods. Um, by the time we get out here to harvest, typically you'll see the plants they'll They'll be bent over like that because you're setting enough fruit on top of it. But we've got really nice stalks. Um, they're, they're pretty thick, uh, so they should be able to hold up without lodging. And, uh, and we'll just keep pushing them and, until the very end. We've really been fine tuning our infro program over the past couple of years and running some products that are really making a difference with this early season root growth. So we love our Pivot Bio, using that product number one, and then we're adding some things to not only feed that Pivot Bio, but feed the corn plant as well. So some sugar sources, a carbon source, just trying to get these little plants off to the best start we can get them. Fun side we're using is Veltima, because our third year with it, it's been working great. Uh, there has been some tar spot already spotted in northern Ohio. Normally we've already flown all, all this corn, but we was able to wait until July 26 today. It's already past blister stage, starting to fill out already. Clearly we've been able to keep disease pressure away, and the Veltima should, that, that should protect us all the way through the rest of the season. I've really liked the wide row beans that we've been using for the last three years, and We've had a really good seed dealer that we've been working with and, and one of the things that we've looked at is a lot of times their program sheets when they talk about, you know, do we have a tall thin plant, a medium bush or a full bushy plant. Um, this plant here was actually um, a, a medium bush uh, with medium height. Um, you know, this plant here has been running anywhere from like four, four feet, about 48 inches to 50 inches in height. It's really consistent across the field. We like to do our own seed trials where when we're trying a, a different variety, um, the, the edge of this field here, we planted in 30s, and then we've actually got some twin row 30s, and then we've got some 15 inch beans all in the same field. Um, we really wanted to see, will this plant adapt 
to our 30 inch row program or you know if we see really good results out of this crop do we want to use that seed next year and do we want to use a different row spacing so you know that's one of the things is sometimes we'll we'll take the extra time i mean you're talking about an extra probably two hours changing up our planter passes changing out the to different planters um, but to be able to see you know what is this bean going to perform in which row um, so that's kind of you can see the rows you know straight down the field right you know right here we're at 30s um, the next section right here you can actually see the canopy steps up just a little bit that's our twin row 30s um, and then when it goes over to the next side of the field we're on 15 inches um, we we did change the population just a little bit we're running 140,000 population on 30 inch rows the twin row 30s and the 15 inch beans we planted this field at 160,000 um, you know moving those plants apart and getting a little bit more spacing between the plants we're, we're able to to maintain that plant population without it suffering for nutrients or moisture so we've got a pretty good plant here like i said this is on uh, this is on our 30s we've got really good branching that's one of the the benefits of running a little bit of gibberellic in furrow um, it seems like when we, we first started farming and we had beans that first node would be probably two to three inches lower and we just absolutely had to scalp the ground to be able to get all the beans on that plant that very bottom node just a little bit of gibberellic gets that elongation right there um, with our in furrow makes it a lot easier for us at harvest time you know we don't we don't have to run completely on the ground we can pick it up just a little bit pretty much this whole field has been pretty consistent the first beans that we're putting on here have pretty much all been three bean pods but we're starting to get up here we're seeing that we're starting to set pods on the upper node so once again like i said it's it's perfect time for us to hit that r3 uh, fungicide we haven't had much insect damage on this farm um, We've really maintained our bricks levels in these plants. I mean, our, our average bricks reading has been anywhere from about a 25 to a 35. Uh, we did have a little bit of stink bug damage in, in the perimeter of the field, but we haven't saw them move into the field yet. So that means that our program with our sugar has been working pretty dang well this year. You can see that there's not hardly any foliage that's been, been taken off of this field yet. The reason I'm looking to put the Revitech out is it's it's about protecting the plant um, we don't do just a blanket approach with fungicides on our farm we do scouting and we also look at where other disease has been in, in in areas around us so typically with southern rust we'll see reports of southern rust start in that florida georgia line area it'll move up through georgia into south carolina and then by the time they see it in south carolina we're we're typically within a about a week or so of seeing it move up here with with rain showers um, we've seen rust um, a little bit further south. Uh, this year it's been staying in that Georgia region, but um, we have seen some frog eye leaf spot um, in the area and knowing that that's around and that's one of the big uh, yield limiters for our area, we'll go ahead and we'll put our Revitech out now because we've, we've already seen it in the area so that we already know it's here so it's time for us to go ahead and protect that plant at R3. So, I mean, we've, we've used a bunch of products over the years as, as we've seen some of the technology and the chemistry change in fungicides. Revitech has probably been, I would say, one of the most universals for our farm uh, as far as protecting that yield later in the season. Typically for us, you know, we're looking at a 14-day a time frame, so we'll put Revitech out now. Um, we'll continue to do scouting, and uh, if we see disease in the area, kind of ramp up in other fields and and see other farms that are, are are seeing issues we may make a second application in that 14 day time frame but it it really does work out pretty well it's it's a it's a long lasting fungicide farmers deserve a nitrogen that works as hard as they do one that stays with the crop until the job is done it's time to turn to a better nitrogen with pivot bio Side we're using is Veltima because our third year with it, it's been working great. Uh, there has been some tar spot already spotted in northern Ohio. Normally, we've already flown all, all this corn, but we was able to wait until July 26 today. It's already past blister stage, starting to fill out already. We've been able to keep disease pressure away, and Veltima should that, that should protect us all the way through the rest of the season. Our goal was to hit 150 bushels. Um, this field 
This field here has, has produced over 360 bushel corn. Um, we've had beans here before that were in that 80 to 90 range, but that was six, seven years ago before we had, you know, some of our planter systems uh, updated and, and our fertility programs updated. So realistically, this ground could produce uh, a crop as long as we maintain moisture and keep stress down. So that's some of the late season products that we're looking at is to stop that ethylene production. You know, the high heat's coming this next week, um, pretty much anywhere from here through the Midwest, they're, they're talking about an oven, but our goal with this foliar pass is to feed the plant, but also look at changing some of those plant hormones where we don't see stress and we don't see pot abortion and flower abortion and we keep packing the yield on. So we'll, uh, we'll go out here and look at one of our, uh, one of our plots. But see the deer, the deer ran the wood line and there's probably about a 10 foot area all the way around this field um, where, you know, when the bean plants were a little bit smaller, they hit them hit them pretty hard, especially in this area. So we've had some cucklebur come in. So that's what I'm saying. Like the whole field looks pretty good except for this one edge boundary and, and going up that direction towards the road. So probably just, I mean, we've got enough, we've got enough clearance still that we can put the, we can put the hooded sprayer bar on the tractor and come in here and just try to hit it with the hooded sprayer, clean these, you know, little areas up and, and not really make the, the crop suffer. Out here, where we've done our complete program. You've got one, two, three, 47, 48, 49. So we've got 49 node sites. Um, and like I said, we're, we're averaging edge of the field in the 30s, 45 to 55 out here in the field. Um, I would love to see some 60s. We've never had 60 nodes on the farm yet. Um, and, and playing around with some of the PGRs, we've, we've got some check strips where we've been using Biosite from Triangle Chemical, uh, Meharin, we've got Tribal and Microamp. We've got a couple different products this year that we're trying, some of the, the cytokines, the, the IBAs, the gibberellics. Um, we switched away from the oxens once we hit R1. Right, wrong, or indifferent. Maybe somebody from the show wants to ride in and tell me a difference, but I looked at an oxen would kind of be like an oxen herbicide. And if we spray that oxen after R1, we may have some issues with, with a bloom or pot abortion. So we've, we've switched away from those once we hit the reproductive stage. But, but I mean, I'm six foot six. You see the funny pictures where guys walk out in their bean fields on their knees and they're like, hey man, these beans are shoulder high. That might come true with some of these being close to that um, by the time the, you know, we get to the end of the season. But I mean, if you look in here, there's, there's not a lot of bug damage. Um, you know, we've got a good dark green tint to them. Um, I mean, we've got a little bit. I mean, here's out of this three foot area, we found two leaves that have had a little bit of a little bit of uh, insect damage on them, but we're maintaining them. We'll see how they do. No, I would rather see more branches, but I think, I mean, having three to five branches running off the main stem, that's pretty dang good. And, you know, lodging definitely could be an issue if we continue to get, you know, over chest high. I've had I've had beans chest high before that didn't lodge. 2021, them beans, them beans were set on my chest in 2021. But they had a, I mean, by the end of the season, they had a stalk on them the size of a quarter. I mean, it'll, it'll tear a cutter bar up in a day. Oh, there's the first one I've seen. 